Hi! This video is going to be about Newtone model IS515 remote stations. So these are both IS515s and the IS515s they were used with the Newtone IM5006 radio intercom selective call system and they were also used with the later IM5000 intercom only selective call systems. Simply put, there are two versions of IS-515s. They both carry the IS-515 model number. There was no ISA-515. They're all just 515s. All the information in this video also applies to the IS-518s. Those are the larger speakers with the 8-inch diameter speaker cones instead of the 5-inch cones. The nice thing about the design of the 515s and the 518s is that the circuit board assemblies on the back of the grills are the same for both models. The 518s, which are a larger speaker, they don't use a larger circuit board. They're all the same. It's just the grill and the speaker cone that's a different size. So This all applies to both of those models. So the way we look at 515s is there are early ones and there are late ones. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how to make the, the determination of which you have and then also how to completely disassemble the speaker because we're going to be re-whitening this is in a different video the speaker grill this one belongs to a customer and we're going to re-whiten the grill and to do that we have to take all the guts off and then put it all back on later on so i thought i'd show you how to do that so let's flip these over this is the early one and this one is the late one and you would think it would be the other way around because this one's so discolored but that's not how it works so if we flip them around you'll see that they're very similar on the back in fact let me prop it up here for you and it'll be easier to see. So what we have here is the subtle differences are the basic layout is the same on both. We have two circuit boards on each one, the, the main board and a switch board underneath, and the main board and a switch board underneath. The early ones, they have this rectangular shaped microcontroller on the board here whereas the later ones have a square microcontroller here. The square one is also thicker, but if you don't have one to compare, that might be hard for you to notice. You have a five inch speaker cone on the back of each one. These speaker cones are different than the speaker cones that are used in other Newtone five inch inside remote stations like from the same period, IS, 335s and IS 325s and IS 445s. Same size speaker cone, similar in ratings, but they are technically different part numbers and they are different cones. One of the other things that the telltale sign of a later model IS 515 is on all of the late later ones, they have here on the speaker leads, the speaker leads are these red and black wires right here, they have this ferrite bead that the speaker wire is wrapped through and then the bead is wire tied onto the speaker frame. And that's, how, that's the easiest way to tell whether you have a late one or an early one. They are also slightly different in how they're assembled and I'm going to show you that. As for using them, they're identical. These are both interchangeable. If you have all early speakers and you had one go out or you have to add one or something like that and you can only find a later speaker, you can put that into the system. It doesn't care. They're all completely interchangeable and you can also go the other way. If you have all later speakers and you need to add one or replace one, you can use an earlier speaker with the system and that's fine. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to disassemble each of these. It's going to be in two parts. We're going to do the early one first and then they'll, we're going to do the later one and I'm going to put some kind of titles at the front of each one of those so you can easily find them and if I remember, I'll put the uh, time log down in the video description. If you want to jump to yours, you can do that. So let's go ahead and get this set up and I'll show you how to take these apart. All right, so this is the early IS-515, the one with the rectangular 
microcontroller and no ferrite bead on the speaker wires. So to take this apart, let's say that you were going to remove the guts of this because you were going to replace the faceplate on it or something like that. The easiest way to do this is to take it apart as an assembly instead of undoing every single thing. Now, this is the cautionary part and this part is important. If you're going to work on any station on your IM5006 or IM5000 system, you absolutely positively have to turn the power to the system off. It has to be completely shut down by turning the circuit breaker off. If you don't, you run the risk of damaging the master station, damaging the control unit, damaging the speaker. So you absolutely positively have to do that. You cannot disconnect connect any individual wires from the speaker while the system is turned on because you will damage the system. So you have been forewarned. So go turn the power off. Everybody needs to know that. So that's what you have to do. Okay. So to take this off, take this apart on the back of the main circuit board here, there's this plastic cover to protect the circuit board. And to remove that, there are four screws here, 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 and here. And you take the screws out. And of course, if you're doing this on a workbench, you should put the screws in a metal cup or something so you don't, they don't roll off the workbench and you don't lose them. Uh, if you're actually doing this while it's hooked up, you, you don't necessarily have to disconnect the wires, although it probably will be easier for you if you do, and then you can put it on the workbench or on the kitchen counter to do this. So you take out the four screws and the plastic cover comes off. And then this board kind of folds up like this so you can see the other side of it. And the next thing you need to do is there's this black ground wire right here. And on the end of the black ground wire is a little plug on connector and it plugs onto this little ground pin right here next to this little red transformer. So this plugs on right here. Now, you probably could do the rest of this without taking the ground wire off, but it's easy enough to do and put back that it's not really a big deal. The other side of the board has these three multi-wired cable plugs. These you don't really need to unplug. You could if you really wanted to, but you don't really need to because there's plenty of slack in all of this. You can move it around and it's not really in the way so we can remove this board. So most of the time you can just leave this like it is. I'm going to go ahead and put this kind of sideways. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove the screws out of the switchboard assembly. There are five screws. One, two, three, four, five. And if we unscrew those and put them in the cup, that loosens up so you can remove the switchboard and it just simply lifts out of the speaker grill. And on this side of it, there's a whole bunch of little square tactile switches. Sometimes these do go bad and these can be replaced. The ones that get used a lot, the numbers between one and nine and the talk button and so forth. Sometimes they get a little hinky. Sometimes you can clean them with a little contact cleaner, but oftentimes you have to replace them and these are readily available, so it's not too bad. You've got some red rectangular LEDs that show through the panel to show you what mode you're in. There's a little condenser mic right here. Not a lot on this board, but this is a board sometimes, especially on outdoor stations, if it gets water on it, it'll corrode and that's not good. So anyway, we'll just set that aside there. You also have in front of that board, you have this piece of copper foil shielding and that's actually what the ground wire comes off of. And this is to help block out electrical noise that's generated by the circuit boards and it's important to have this in place. We'll just set that aside and now we're going to take our speaker cone off and it's just held on with four screws. So you notice I didn't even disconnect the wires from the speaker cones and I didn't unplug the little plug down here because you don't really need to. You can actually take this all apart and then this just lifts out. And what we have left is our plastic grill with nothing on the back. So 
that's all that's all there is to taking it apart now let me show you how to put it back together so let's say you're doing this because you're getting rid of your hugely yellowed grill like this and you're opting for a replacement white grill to restore the appearance of it so basically we're just going to do everything in back in the backwards order we have a blank speaker grill or station grill we're going to put our speaker cone on the back of it and we're going to put down hold it down with the four screws now when you put the four screws in to hold the speaker down i always do them diagonally and you don't need to wrench on the on the screws they just need to be hand tight i don't recommend you do this with a cordless screwdriver or cordless drill because if you wrench on them too much you can break the plastic standoffs off the back of the grill that's the part the screw threads into and then if you break that off the speaker won't stay down tight and that's not good so we put that in we're going to put our copper shield back on and it only really fits one way because it has all of these holes in it and they have to line up with all the little pegs on the back of the buttons so it really only fits on one way and you just sort of sit it down in there and lightly sort of push it down so it's reasonably flat and then we'll take our circuit boards we'll put our switchboard back first and again it only really goes down one way of course it's easier to do if I wasn't doing it upside down but I am oops see it's upside down because it goes this way see it only goes one way anyway so once you get that lightly in place and this is a pretty good design because you can't really get it in crooked and again the five little screws that hold it in place not terribly difficult I guess one of the things you have to watch out for and make sure is that the LEDs fit through the little cutouts in the speaker grill properly like that this is always easier to do when you're not making a video and you're not standing off to the side and you're not trying to describe everything you're doing as you go so there's four of the screws and the last one and yes you do have to put all the screws back in and then we're going to put our main board back of course we have to plug our ground wire back into the little pin next to the red transformer so this goes right here and this sits on top like this and of course we have to put our plastic shield back on to protect the board Like that and that's all there is to it it's that simple you should check and make sure that each button presses correctly you can hear them go click make sure nothing hangs up and now it's time to reinstall it and connect it back up to your system so on the plastic shield around the six screws one two three four five six that the intercom wires get attached to it's all color-coded you have black black white orange orange white red red white it is absolutely necessary that you get all the right colors underneath all the right screws now if you've taken yours off and for some reason your system wasn't wired with new tone wire and the colors of your wires don't match the colors here what you need to do is you can need to take a picture of it before you disconnect the wires or make a drawing with a diagram to show which color go to, goes to which screw and if you forgot to do all of that then you can go take another speaker off the wall in another room check out what the color coding was how it was done on that one and then duplicate it on this one and that's all there is to it all right this is the disassembly of a later model IS515 Newtone inside remote intercom station and you can tell it's the later model one because it has the square microcontroller here 
and it has the ferrite bead here that the speaker leads go through and it's wire tied onto the speaker frame. To disassemble this, we'll put it this way, there are four screws that hold the main circuit board to the back of the grill and over the back of the main board is this clear plastic cover. So to remove that, you have to remove the four screws. You should put the screws in some kind of container so you don't lose them because there are no extra. And once you take the four screws off, you can lift away the clear plastic protective sheet, put that aside. And now the circuit board is somewhat loose. However, underneath right here is a connection that has to be desoldered. There's a grounding wire that runs from the foil or the copper shield, which you'll see when we get the whole thing apart. It's one end of the ground wire is soldered to the copper shield and then it goes up and it's soldered onto a pin right here and to be able to flip this board over so we can take the screws out of the switchboard that has to be desoldered. There's not enough slack to do it as it is now. So to desolder it, it's not difficult if you have a soldering iron. All you have to do is heat up the joint. See if you can see that. We'll heat up the joint a little bit and it'll pop right off. And now you can fold the board open and you can gain access to the back of the switchboard here. On the back of the main board, there are these three multi-wired cable assemblies that plug into the main board. One here, one here, and a little tiny one down here with the speaker wires. I don't normally unplug these because you don't really need to. There's plenty of play once you get the ground wire unsoldered. So we'll just let that flop over like that. We'll take out the five screws. That hold the switchboard assembly in place. Oops. I missed the cup. See, that's how screws go missing. All right, so we'll do that. And now we need to take the speaker. So the switchboard assembly is loose, but we need to take the speaker cone off the back of the grill also because the ferrite bead is wire tied to the speaker frame. So it's all kind of tied together. And I don't really want to cut the wire tie because I don't need to. I'm going to have to take the speaker off anyway. So we'll just take all of this apart as one piece. And that's a perfectly good way to do this. And we'll take the speaker cone off and we'll lift the switchboard assembly out. And here's our copper shield here with the ground wire that we desoldered. So we'll put that aside. Now, Let's say that the reason we're doing this one for this customer is because we're going to re-whiten the grill and that's in a different video that you can watch if you want to what we're going to do with this. But let's say that we've already re-whitened it and we need to put it back together. So by the miracle of modern TV or modern YouTube, I guess. Oh, look, it's been whitened already. It's just like on those cooking shows when they used to take the turkey out of the oven after 12 minutes. So here's our re-whitened grill and the reassembly is exactly the same. We're gonna take our copper shield and we're gonna sit it back down on the back of the button assembly. And it only really fits one way because it has all of these little cutouts in it and they have to fit over all of the little posts on the buttons and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty easy. And then as an assembly, see it's all one big giant piece still. We'll put the speaker cone back on its posts and we'll just, for right now, sit the switchboard assembly back in place like that. And you can see how it all just fits together pretty easily. And then we'll take our screws. I like to do the switchboard screw first, just to hold it down, I'll put one. And then we'll put our four speaker screws. Now, when you put the speaker screws on, I always do them diagonally and you just need to snug them down. They just need to be hand tight. I don't recommend you do this with a cordless drill or a cordless screwdriver or anything like that because if you over tighten them, 
you run the risk of breaking off the little plastic standoff that the screw fits into. The, the standoff is part of the grill and that's what the screw threads into and if you over tighten the screw you can snap off the standoff and then that end of the speaker won't stay tight so you don't want to do that so just do it by hand. Now we'll put our rest of the screws back in our switchboard So now we're ready to put the main board back down, but before we can actually screw it in place, we have to re-solder the ground wire back to the ground pin. The ground pin is where you unsoldered it from. It sits right next to this little red transformer right here, and yes, you really should re-solder it. So it's not terribly difficult to do, and they give you enough slack. All you really have to do is hold it the wire end of the wire and it's already got a big blob of solder on it and that will be fine so you hold it up next to the post and you heat it up with your soldering iron for a couple seconds till the solder flows and then hold it in place until it sets up and that's really all there is to it now you can put the board back in place don't forget to put your plastic cover back on and then put the four screws back in. Like that. And like that. So now we've reassembled the station all together. Once you've done that, you should check and make sure that all of the buttons operate correctly. Each one, when you push it, you can hear it go click. And none of them are hanging up, so that's good. Now it's time to reconnect it to your system. So around on the six screws where the six intercom wires get attached, one, two, three, four, five, six, on the clear plastic cover, it's labeled as to which color wire goes where. You have black, black, white, orange, orange, white, red, red, white. It is absolutely necessary that you get all the right colors on all the right screws. If you get them backwards or mixed up, you can damage your system or at the very minimal, it won't work properly. If for some reason your system was not wired with Newtone wire, which has color coding that matches the labeling, what you need to do is before you disconnect the wires, you need to either take a picture of this so you know what order the wires go in, or you can make a drawing and a diagram that shows which color of wire for your system goes on which screw. And if you forgot to do all of that before you disconnected it, you can always go to another room and remove a station from the wall and see how it was wired, which colors go on which screw, and then copy it for this station. And there you have it. That's how you disassemble an early Newtone IS515 inside station or a later IS515 inside station. These steps are exactly the same if you have the larger 518 early or 518 late. The only difference will be those have a larger diameter speaker cone, but it's still held on with four screws, so it's not really that big of a deal. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.